Well, here's the man behind the operation, Ron Simon. Ron Simon Racing. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. You've been a busy guy today. <laughs> yeah. You set up this whole operation at uh -huh. uh, Spa Francorchamps, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so, on this particular deal, you lined up the track. Everybody went through you. You provide instructors. The, the whole deal is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. That's what we do here at Spa. We uh, we rent the track. We have the instructors here. We have the cars here. And in fact, we facilitate for people who are not able to bring their car to Spa because they're from Australia or uh, the USA or whatever they come for uh, from uh, who need you know to fly in here. Absolutely. And that's when the Speed Journal was wanting to come to Germany, do this European excursion, we wanted a service that could do basically everything. We didn't want to deal with all the logistics. So we gave you a call and from there you booked the dates. And what's really cool too is you, you, we got Nürburgring and Spa back to back. Back to back in Yeah, the, so it helped out on our trip. We're right here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what people can do. They can call you and then once they call you, what services do you have for them? Well, basically what you enjoy, this is that you, you arrived at the Nürburgring. Uh, we, did a, we did a track day at the Nürburgring uh, and then uh, you drove over to Spa which is basically, it's, it's an hour and a half by car, beautiful winding oh, roads yeah, right. uh, on the RS yeah, you drove. That's the and, bonus in itself. Uh, yeah, exactly. And then uh, now we're at Spa, and uh, so in two days you drive the Nürburgring mm -hmm. and Spa back to back, uh, and it's possible because it's, it's only an hour apart. Yeah, no, that, that's beautiful. Now, what, what are some of the other tracks that you uh, run at, Ron? Well, basically we, we run everywhere, but our bases are the Nürburgring, and uh, we have a big facility there. Right. Uh, Spa, we have a big facility here as well. And we run, in the winter time, we run tracks in, in Southern uh, Europe, so in, in sometimes Italy or uh, in uh, Spain and Portugal. So the Ascari track is a bit famous in Portimao. Um, but apart from that, apart from the main tracks, which is for us Nürburgring and Spa, yeah. we always send cars out to you know wherever our customers want the car to be. Oh. So uh, we go to uh, to Salzburg Ring, we go to Hockenheim, we go to Zolder, to Zandvoort, to you know you name it, all the tracks uh, which are within let's say a day's drive. Yeah, so you're very diverse in that aspect. Yeah. So tell me about some of the cars you have in your fleet. You've got budget cars, and you've got the guy that wants the best, right? Yes, yes, there's, there's something for everyone. It all starts at the Nürburgring with the, the small four-cylinder Twingo Renaults. So you're looking at 100 horsepower, but it's, it's you know, a lot of bang for the buck. Uh, yeah. It's cheap and uh, for many people it's enough because too much car would be, you know, would be, you know, overkill uh, very quickly. And there's still, you know, a lot of guys with not, not with big, big, uh, pockets of money yeah. so they can enjoy the Nürburgring in a four lap or two lap uh, package already you know for as low as 200 euros or something oh, so that, that is cool and you yeah. get the t-shirt you can say I drove the Nürburgring yeah. you can't say I drove the Nürburgring in a GT3 but hey everything has its price so we start yeah. with the low level cars and it goes all the way up to the Porsche GT3 you drove today and that is one of the top road registered cars we rent out and then there's everything in between like uh, the the mid-range is, is a BMW M4, an M2, a Lotus Exige V6, the Caymans, there's numerous cars. Oh yeah, great variety. Now instructors too, for instance yesterday is my first day at Nürburgring, there's no way I'm going to go out there by myself. I had somebody that knows the track sit with me, guide me around. You guys have great instructors. They really are enthusiastic about what they do. Yes, it, it, it takes passion uh, and skill, otherwise you die. <laughs> it, it, yeah. But and passion. And a little bit of fearless too, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, they have to be a bit fearless. And uh, uh, since we have a, a, you know, an interna international clientele, uh, we, we support all the languages. We have, so we have guys from it's the big Porsche uh, RSR going around. Wow. Eh? Tell us about that real quick. Uh, well, it's a Porsche entry, you see it going. Uh, uh, and they test suspension parts in the RSR, is what they told us. Okay, so this is their, their latest race car? This is the latest RSR uh, race car, which got the uh, inverted uh, engine. So the engine is in front of the gearbox. Uh, and in all the, you know, the normal, uh, ni normal 911s, 
okay. it's the other way around, just like uh, it was in, back in the days in the VWs. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. That's another aspect of being at a world-class track like this. You pick up these little bits uh, and pieces of special yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we have LMP cars here. That's also very oh, really? cool to see wow. the speed difference. And yeah. that is the thing. It, 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 it blends so well together because of the mindset of the people. It is not, we don't, we don't cater for a test day or a race day. It is a track day right. and everyone has the right to be on track where they are on track and everybody should respect that. It's not only the, the, the driving on track, the, the being alone in the car on the track. It's the main thing, yeah. but it's also about you know, what you see here, the cool cars you yeah. see, the cool people you meet, the evening dinners, the, the wine stuff, which I like a lot. Absolutely. Uh, you know, enjoy the rest, restaurants, enjoy the scenery here. The Arden Mountains uh, is, is beautiful, uh, as is the, the, the Nürburgring Eiffel region. So it's, it's absolutely a, a cool thing to do. And it should be on everybody's list. Even Absolutely. if it's a, a once in a lifetime thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're a car enthusiast, this is a have to. This do. is Mecca. Yeah. yeah. Well, this track's been around since what, 1925, 1927, Nurburgring uh, too. Well, Nurburgring 27, but yeah. there were races here in 1898. No. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yes, yes, oh yes. Oh my gosh. And it's the time where maybe a little bit of history of the track. It was 15. Point, I think seven or nine kilometers long. Uh -huh. uh, Just through previously. the Arden Forest, right? Basically, the it, the. The history is this, the Spa is the coffee house of Europe. Okay. All the, the, the rich and, and famous people came there uh, for their spa treatments and stuff. Ah. And then the first cars came and they wanted to compete. Yeah. And uh, I think it was like, uh, let's see where can we race. Ah. And they found this village of Francorchamps and they connected it with Stavelo and Malmedy. Uh, Malmedy Stavelo, and that triangle became the track. Okay. It's basically uh, between three villages. Yeah. And, uh, that stayed for a long time until it was shortened, I think, uh, in the early 70s. And mm -hmm. the famous corners are the Masta King and Burnenville. Burnenville, the longest corner in the world, oh. maybe apart from ovals in the US, but right. it's 900 meters of corner. Oh, my gosh. Uh, back in the times of the, in the days of the 917s, um, uh, Dickie Atwood, we, we were walking the track there, and he said, "Well, this was the only guardrail that was on the whole track, and it's uh, and it's it, you know you go downhill in a right-hander, in the 917s back in the days, at flat out at 300 plus kilometers an hour, Amazing. where the nose was lifting everywhere, and yeah. that's a, so uh, those were the days, and those were the corners. The Master King is famous, famous corner. Oh. You know uh, Dennis Jenkinson. Mm -hmm. Dennis uh, always used to uh, to rent." The, the, uh, the bedroom of the guys living in that house and he would sit in the window seal to see the cars coming and he was the, the kind of guy who say uh, he's, he's not, not on it, he's not flat out and, uh, and he could oh. see who was flat because Master King was flat or almost flat. Uh, okay. uh, almost serious, like orders, serious stuff. Oh, so that was the track back then um, and then it got uh, shortened and then it still wasn't permanent yeah. and i think in 2000 and i'm not sure about that in 2001 it became a permanent track okay when they had uh, you know the roads around it right were uh, were there and you know that's another thing i want to point out too is this, this track is well it's obviously the home of the belgian formula one grand prix yes and so uh, with fai rules they made the track a lot safer than it was for the first what 70 years 80 years so if somebody's coming here for the first time, they can rest assured that there's some runoff, there's, there's some safe areas uh -huh. uh, if there's potential problems. Exactly, right? yes. And that's, the, that's a big difference with the Nürburgring. In the Nürburgring, you have to treat it with a lot more respect and it takes a, a lot more time to get acquainted to the track and to be able to drive quick. Yes. Here, it is, and it, it, it's, you know, of course, it's only seven kilometers instead of 21. Yeah. And uh, at the Nürburgring, everything is blind. And here, it's only a few blind things. Uh, and it's wider here. So in, in a good, everybody, in two hours, you, you know where you're going. You know where the corner uh, is going, uh, where it's a left-hander or a right-hander. And you know what gear to be in. And then you can start building from that. So you, you can start, as an instructor, working with a client already very, you know, right from the start. Mm -hmm. At the Nürburgring, it's completely different. At the Nürburgring, we are some sort of a tourist guide. You first need to, you know, uh, hold them by the hand and make sure that they know where they're going. And only when you know where you're going, you can start really driving. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think uh, it's been said that the first 500 laps at Nürburgring, you're just a beginner. Yes, it's yeah, yeah. 500 laps, that's, uh -huh. yeah. 
and, and kilometers. Uh, yeah, and and the, the the biggest risk is of course in the first lap. I would say it's always yeah. the case. And then uh, there's a big risk, or the risk is then when you think you know where you are. Yeah. After say oh, yeah. 50 to 100 laps. You could be more dangerous at that point than you were in the Ex beginning. Exactly. Yeah, because you think you know where you are. You build confidence, and all of a sudden, oh, it was a different place. Yeah. And uh, when you pass that stage, so 200 laps then it starts to get real dangerous because you're gonna, it is high concentration for 10 minutes. Eh? Yeah. And what you do then is you ease off a bit, you relax a bit in the so-called straights, yeah. but there's no straights, uh, there's no straights. Straight. Yeah. No. So then the big accidents happen because of the high speed on, the, on these so-called straights. Yeah. And that's the, 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 the track will change itself for you uh, within the, the first thousand laps, maybe ten times or more, because also the 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 more you know, the quicker you go, the more different every corner is. Yeah. And I always explain it uh, like this: there's a combination of uh, of a section of three turns, A, B, and C. So C is not a corner for you because you don't know A yet, and yeah. certainly not B. Yeah. So before you face C as 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 a real corner you first need to learn A, and you learn A, uh, you see corner A four times every hour, five yeah. times every hour, right. yeah. so it's not enough to, to yeah. really build up. So first you need to learn A, that takes some time, and then you uh, will learn B, and only after that corner C will become a corner. Yeah. It just reveals itself as yeah, you yeah. go. And the last corner, uh, it's, a, it's a tricky one, it's a Galgenkopf. The last corner is onto the main straight, that will be the last corner you're going to learn. And it's very difficult because it sucks you in, turning in too early. And every time you, uh, you uh, come out of that corner, you think, ah, I didn't nail that. It was the opposite. It's I suck. I really suck. So next lap, I come around, I'm going to nail this sucker. Uh -huh. And then you come around the next time, and then the same happens. Because you were concentrating for already 10 minutes again, yeah. concentrating hard for all these parts. And, and it, nobody can do that very quickly. No, yeah. no, not at all. Now, also something that, that, that fortunately I learned ahead of time uh, working through RSR is there's uh, public transportation days and then there's also specific track days, correct? Yes, correct. They, they, they're public transportation, they call it tourist sessions. Okay. And we, we call it terrorist sessions. Terrorist, okay. Yeah. In an ideal world, you want to track by yourself. Okay. Uh, uh, but that's not going to happen because it's 70,000 euros a day. Yeah. Right? Uh, um, and because of that, uh, there's not that many track days. Mm -hmm. So an ideal world does not exist. And you, you nailed it with these days coming because yeah. it's, it's quite rare that we have, that we have two track days, Nürburgring and Spa, back to back in oh, two days. Yeah. Uh, that, that is rare. It happens in, you know, when there's two days in between or three days in, be in between, but not back to back. Yeah. So uh, most people will start driving the Nordschleife in the so-called tourist sessions. Uh -huh. And uh, I would say it, it, it depends on how busy it is. Uh, um, you know how much quality you can get out of it uh, remember we started the conversation about people who want to do four laps yeah. you cannot do that on a track day it's everything paying the thousand euros entry fee or the 600 euros entry fee or nothing on a track day, on a tourist day you can do one lap or four laps and if you're lucky or you know if you choose your time out wisely then you can have brilliant track time even in tourist sessions okay. for for you know for for cheap yeah. yeah and the thing is that uh, uh, i think it's normal that people are not uh, they they almost never call us and tell us let me know when i should come to the nurburgring no it's the other way around they tell us that is my day off then i have time uh, what can you what can you offer me yeah. and i mean 9 out of 10 it's it's tourist sessions or nothing uh -huh. yeah because the tourist sessions you can drive to Nürburgring almost every day of the week, every week of the month, every month of the year. If, it's, if the con conditions allow, then the track is open because they want to you know, make money. They want yeah. to keep it open. Right. Uh, the exclusive track days, it's maybe you know, 10 to 20 days a year mm, okay. where there's the option for driving an exclusive event. Is there ever any threat? Do you ever have any concerns that, that we may not have that, that liberty, that luxury to, to 
run on a track, flat out speeds, that historic track. I think the situation at, at the Nürburgring is, uh, is now better than ever with the financial funding of a private, private party. Oh, good. Yeah. But it, it is also risky in a way. You know, we always said, well, there needs to be money, there needs to be money. But when there's too much money and the guy says, well, I don't want all these idiots on my track. It's for me private, my yeah. private backyard wow. and, and it's for me only. Yeah. But so far, so far, that, uh, that uh, is not the case. So uh, it, looks, it looks better than, than, than ever good. or better than, than the last 10 years. Yeah, good. Glad to hear it. Well, hey, that's our uh, wrap up with Ron. Thanks so much. Thank you. Wow, learned a whole bunch. Had a great time too. Yeah. Look forward to coming back again. Yeah, please come back. Yep, you can count on because, that. Because uh, because uh, once is never enough. No. As the guy said that you know uh, people when we asked them is this a bucket list thing for you? Is it a one time thing? That yes, it's a one time thing. And after we finished the event last last uh, couple of weeks with Ross Bentley's group, and everybody said the same. I I need to come back. Yeah. I need to master this place. It's, I need to. It's so beautiful. Uh, this is, is this is the thing I want to repeat. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it's it's so much more than attractive. It's an overall life experience. I mean, yeah. You can't even put it into words. So. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much, Ron. Cool. Thanks. All right, you bet.